Okay, so the question says a brave but inadequate rugby player is being pushed backward by an opposing player. Uh, let me just start doodling. Um, so I guess we got two people who are interacting. So I got one rugby player and there is an opposing player who's pushing um, and exerting a backward force. Um, of, I, I, well, somehow in my head, I imagined this player trying to go left. So that's how I'm drawing it. Um, if you drew it the other way, that's fine. It, what matters is consistency. So he's been pushed backward by 800 Newton. The mess of the losing player, so that would be this person. Harsh losing player. Plus equipment is 90 kilograms. Um, and he is accelerating backwards at uh, 0.75 Newton, uh, 0 0.75 uh, meter per second squared. Um, okay. Part A asks, what is the force of friction between the <laughs> losing player's feet and the grass? Okay, so I think I need to draw the free body diagram of <laughs> I hate the word losing player at uh, between the bob, <laughs> bob's feet and the grass. Okay. Um, so the free body diagram of bob. Um, so I have a mass of bob. Um, so, so this is, by the way, how, how I like to draw free body diagram as a simplified as possible. And for this the first few weeks, I'll basically be using a dot. And later on, when we cover rigid body motion with the extended bodies, then I'll start to draw larger objects, but only because I need to. Uh, for now, a dot is sufficient, so I'll use dot. So the question gives you one of the forces that's uh, acting on a bar. So let me draw this force, call this apply the force on bar. And I think you can figure out that that must uh, not be only force on Bob because when you figure this acceleration and the mass of Bob, then um, then I'm pretty sure. Let me see. Um, so um, if you do um, eight hundred newtons divide by ninety, oh, let me. Just to, that, to be sure. So if you do 800 Newtons divided by 90 kilograms, then yeah, you get 8.8 uh, .8 meter per second squared, and that's way more than the actual acceleration. So for the acceleration to come out this small, well, there must be some for the force. And this is where you connect the dots and say, ah, oh, the force of friction. That must be the for the force. So there must be a force acting between the the grass and bob. So let me just uh, label that force and call that friction force. Um, so I do know that must be less than the applied force because the bob is accelerating backward. So, okay. Um, so I think at this point I have enough information here to set up my Newton's second law equation. And one note, note that I do recognize that there must be vertical forces, as in there must be downward force of gravity or weight, and there must be upward force of normal force. Um, I'm not drawing these uh, for two reasons. One, uh, in this situation, these two forces end up balancing each other up. So they don't do anything interesting, one. Two, the question is asking for force of friction directly. Um, so there are situations where you need to connect the friction force to normal force, and here I don't need to. So I can just totally ignore the normal force. So for that reason, I'm not drawing these vertical forces, but I do know that they are there. <laughs> I'm just not drawing them because I don't need to this time. So with that, let me uh, write down my Newton's second law expression which says that net force, um, and I guess, uh, let me call the direction of acceleration my positive direction. 
and uh, that's the direction that is being called backward. So in the way I'm labeling things here, my backward direction is the positive direction. You can do that as long as you're consistent. So net force is going to be the force in the positive direction, apply the force, minus the friction force that I need to figure out. It's going to be mass of Bob. Oh, that would be this times the and acceleration is in the positive direction. So this it's okay that this quantity is positive. Um, that's why I made the, my positive direction go along the acceler acceleration. So this is my one equation that I can write down from my free body diagram. And um, I think I have enough information, but let me do the double check. Uh, when I do double check for if I have enough information, what I always do is I count my equations and unknowns. So I count my equations, one. It's a simple question. I have one equation. So I hope I have only one unknown. So looking at this here, I'm given the applied force. I'm not given the friction force. I need to find it. Uh, I'm given the mass, I'm given the acceleration. So yes, I have one unknown, one equation, I can solve it. Uh, by the way, some of you might be doing, <laughs> be done with this by the time I'm done saying this. And it's fine for easy questions like this. Um, if uh, you take some shortcut, that's fine. So this over, move this over. So it's F applied minus MA. But I want to go through these steps one by one for more complicated questions that you will see this week, um, where if you are used to just skipping these steps, then, <laughs> then you will have difficulties. So, um, so all these, some, what can be a somewhat tedious step, um, these steps are useful for more difficult questions. So it they seem tedious for these easy questions, but they won't seem so tedious for harder questions. Okay, so let me, um, I, I think I have all the numbers, so I'm just going to plug in the numbers. Um, so uh, my applied force is 800 newtons minus a mass 90 kilograms times the acceleration 0 0.75 is equal to, I get positive answer, and that's uh, what I was expecting, so that's good. Uh, when I... Uh, construct these equations, I usually do it expecting my variables to be, will be positive. So if I ever get a negative answer, it will be a kind of an alert to me that something went wrong. So 732.5 newtons. 732.5 newtons. Um, okay, so that's going to be friction force. Um, part B says, what force does the winning player exert on the ground to move forward if his mass plus equipment is 110 kilogram? Okay. Um, oh, so I need a free body diagram of the winning player or player A or Alice. <laughs> My A's are always named Alice. Um, <laughs> So, okay, I, I think I'm gonna need a free body diagram of Alice. Um, so, so let me draw a free body diagram of Alice. Um, actually, sorry, let me just do it right next to Bob. So this uh, was the free body diagram of Bob. And here's free body diagram of Alice. Okay, so one thing I know about Alice is that she is accelerating in the same direction as Bob because they are touching each other, they are moving together. So whatever is Bob's acceleration is the same acceleration for Alice. So there must be right word for son Alice. Um, and ah, so. So this is where you have to take, so I think it's possibly relatively easy to stumble on correct numerical answer for this, which is fine for this question. Now, if you want to get the correct numerical answer for the correct reason, uh, it takes some time going through a force consideration here carefully. So, um, so for the time being, I'm going to label a forward force analysis without fully knowing exactly what that force is, 
where that's coming from. I just know there must be a fourth right word in order for Alice to have right word, um, right word acceleration. <laughs> now, um, if uh, you calculate a numerical answer based on just uh, this, you'll get an answer that says that's wrong. Okay, so you need to consider the forces here fully. And when you might have uh, forgotten some forces, uh, this is something that you will see this week. I explicitly refer to this as Newton's third law check. Uh, when you have multiple objects interacting in your system, you need to check that Newton's third law is obeyed. That is, if you have a force on B due to L, um, so if you have force on B by A, you must have force on A by B. That is equal in magnitude and opposite in direction. I don't have that, so you know I have a right word force on B by Alice, so I must have left word force on Alice by B. And this force by Newton's third law must be equal in magnitude. So this force is already given 800 Newtons. Uh, by the same force that A is pushing on B, B pushes back on A. That's Newton's third law. Okay. Um, and I think I can now work out what this uh, forward force is based on this. And one thing might um, trouble you because the question the question is asking, it's uh, what force does the winning player exert on the ground. It wasn't asking what is the friction force between the, the so it, um, the wording of part B is slightly different from part A. So you might need to go through some reasoning process to convince yourself that this is numerically the same amount of force that part B is asking for. And one way to do that is to think about a free body diagram for ground. This technically isn't really necessary, um, but if you want to be complete, you can. And um, so it's with the ground where you, you will have all the, the third Newton's third law pair to both this friction and this forward force matched up. These forces are coming from contact of these players with the ground. So there's a Newton's third law pair to that friction force that's uh, directed to the right. And there's a Newton's third law pair to that forward force um, to the uh, that's uh, um, that's directed the opposite direction from that. And uh, these are both uh, friction forces as well as same as B. So um, so skipping to the answer step here. <laughs> so the um, I guess uh, I'm looking at the similarity with this. So I think. Uh, the for part to be the uh, force that they're asking for, it should take the same form, yeah. Um, F, oh wait, it, does it take the same form? You know what, I don't think it does. Let me be careful here. So let me start by writing the Newton's second law equation that net force on Alice is equal to F forward minus F applied and that's going to be equal to mass of Alice times acceleration. Yeah, yeah, some of the signs change. So uh, solving for the, 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 the forward force or something that is going to be equal to the magnitude in forward force from Newton's third law relationships, my forward force is equal to ma times acceleration plus the applied force. Okay, so let's see. Uh, uh, mass of Alice, 110 kilogram times the acceleration, 0 0.75, plus the applied force, 882.5 newtons. And this should be the answer to part B. Let's just double check to be sure. 732.5 and 882.5. Yep. And so this question is, um, it, it is somewhat um, more complicated than most of the questions in this set. Um, it's 
when you have Newton's application of Newton's third law or Newton's laws can be tricky when you have multiple bodies interacting. Uh, so <laughs> that's why I did it. <laughs> um, and uh, you will see more examples and practice for this uh, this week. And as we are introducing the standard strategy, you will have a more systematic way to approach questions like this so that um, there's less guesswork, there's less um, worrying about, oh, did I forget this and that? Um, there will be more systematic way to check for things that people could miss as they are answering questions like this.